Although this was intended as an arting exercise, I really wanted to use this particular paper again. I'll admit, the attractive cover with its foil embossing is persuasive. It's Hanamula's 100% cotton cold pressed watercolor paper from their collection line. Now, I know it doesn't say collection anywhere on the cover, but honest to goodness, that's what it was listed as when I ordered it. Anyway, it's probably way too good for practice, but I've only used it a few times and just wanted to verify that it was as pleasurable to paint on as I remembered. That branded sheet of vellum is a nice touch. Kinda classy, yeah? I don't know. Maybe I'm just easily impressed. In the past, I'd done a video on figure sketching using Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth as reference. But this time, things were more loosey-goosey. Because there's no pre-sketching and no reference. The brush I chose is an Aqua Elite 3 8 inch dagger from Princeton. With its wide, flat base and narrow tip, I figured it would force me to adapt a looser style. I could have used my Neptune 3 8 inch dagger, but I wanted a certain amount of definition, and the Aqua Elites, being a synthetic Kalinsky sable, is a little better at that than the Neptunes. That said, next week I may want more thirstiness, in which case I would turn to the Neptunes which are synthetic squirrel hair and hold a lot of water. I forgot to show it off here, but stick around until the end where you can see the brush close up and from all angles. But first of all, in creating the color pools, I used a Neptune Oval Wash or Cat's Tongue brush. The colors are Quinacridone Rust from M. Graham and Permanent Blue Violet from Van Gogh. Needless to say, you aren't going to learn anything about anatomy in this session, but then I've never claimed to be an instructor. This channel is about sharing the arting experience, and anything that smacks of teaching is ancillary. Of course, any experience can be a learning experience, so I'm always thrilled to hear that a video was helpful. Being just one of many, many creators in the YouTube arting pool, I am very happy to have viewers that enjoy what I do. Speaking of learning, I remember in elementary school, those times when the teacher would roll a TV into class and we'd watch a PBS program, usually an art or craft project, and then we'd have to recreate it with construction paper, Elmer's glue, or paste, and round-tipped scissors. It's all very vague, of course, but for some reason I can totally recall the taste of the paste and the aroma of instruction sheets fresh from the ditto machine. The papers barely hit the desks before getting snatched up and sniffed for that sweet hit of duplication fluid.
I could certainly have done this project with another type of brush, round, flat, whatever, but I'm not sure any of those would have produced such pleasing results. I mean, look at the sort of marks you get with this shape. Yeah, the dagger brush is a weird hybrid, and I've yet to find it all that useful, but boy, it was a lot of fun for this exercise. Just a reminder, uh, the colors are Van Gogh's Permanent Blue Violet, which is a combination of PV19 and PB29, and M. Graham's Quinacridone Rust, which is PO48. Both were gifted by kind viewers, and both are, in my opinion, beautiful. Lately, I've been trying to include the mixing dishes in frame. It might just be me, but paint moving around on porcelain is fascinating. In the recent Death Dealer video, I was mesmerized by the slow-burning paint drama amongst the five swirling colors. Sort of like those doodles you'd find on the bottom corners of a textbook the ones that formed a stick figure movie as you flip through them. That was the best part of high school, I tell you. Returning to the topic of crafts, although my mother didn't draw or paint, she could crochet and knit and stitch both by hand and by machine. And on those occasions when we had scraps of pretty paper lying around, she made little kimono paper dolls, which were simple but blew our young minds. What totally impressed me, though, was how she used grains of cooked rice to hold the paper outfits together. Because while we didn't always have glue around, we almost always had rice in the pot.
I'm happy to share this arting experience. I got to play with an unusual brush shape, a couple of lovely paint colors, and the Hanamula collection paper that I've now enjoyed several times. Here's that glamour shot of the brush that was promised earlier. Even the handle is shaped differently. Notice there is no tapering at the end. I admit I have not researched the reasons behind different handle shapes. I mean, I assume it's not simply to stand out from the other brushes. Until next time, remember that rice is a multi-purpose grain. And stay artsy, my friends. <laughs>